Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for watching and following. I know we've been away for a while, but we want to continue with our um, confidence series. So today we're going to talk about sexual confidence. And we have a special guest with us, Christopher. Chris. <laughs> and the subject today is going to be normal or natural. And we'll introduce him later, bring him in later. But we want to talk about this subject because this is something that is kind of difficult for people to discuss sexually. Um, I realized um, when I started doing research for this specific subject that sometimes sexual confidence begins at a young age, you know, in little bitty pockets, little things happen to bring us to where we are as, as an adult to be confident in ourselves. And I can remember um, one specific incident with me just um, being in the fifth grade and becoming a woman, you know, my cycle starting. I can remember because my era, we weren't we weren't really allowed to go to our parents and say, hey, where the babies come from? You know, I'm from New Orleans, so it's like, get to go fast behind somewhere and sit down. So I can't remember my mom came to my room one day after my cycle started. I'm traumatized, like, what's happening? I'm in the fifth grade, what's going on with me? And she threw this book mm -hmm. in my room, um, threw it on the bed, and like, read that book. She closed the door. So it's a little book with little cartoon characters. And it talks about your body and, and becoming a woman, but it's like little cartoon people. So I was so confused. So mm. when I asked her about it, I'm like, what? Um, I have a question. She said, whatever's in the book, read that. Don't ask me no questions. So I was almost led mm. or forced to rely on kids my own age to answer these questions, you know. So it kind of affects your confidence sexually when things mm. happen that way. So I think that it's very important for us as adults, you know, we have children in our lives to kind of be honest with them. And it's going to make sense later when Chris talks about the subject of normal and natural, where it should start early. But, um, yeah, that's my experience with it. And, D, you had an experience as well that kind of led up to your the way I, The way I like, I like foresaw, you know, sexuality. You know, as a, as a younger mm -hmm. girl, I remember... It was this guy in our neighborhood and stuff where I grew up and he he would like fondle me sometimes, you know, and I was a young, I was like seven, probably about mm. seven or eight. And I didn't understand what was going on. And I, mm. I can almost like say like it's a 50 50 chance that he fondled other people, too, you know, so it's probably like right. a lot of like wounded people walking around. But um, yeah, he yeah. would like. He would like do little, you know, like stuff, you know, I was never like penetrated per se, but um, mm. it's still, it's still like, like uh, fashioned the way that I saw mm. sexuality and the way mm. that I just like um, grew up kind of like just the mask that I created was just, I would wear bigger, looser clothes. I was already like mm. really small, but I would just wear looser clothes and I would try to hide within my own just my own mm. essence you know I didn't want to like mm. do anything to like make myself look attractive I didn't want to like do anything to you know to to just mm. like make myself stand out because as a little girl mm. growing up you know and this is this is after I even hit like high school and stuff like that mm. it was still a wound that was mm. deep down you know inside of me that I pushed down inside mm. of me and mm. you know I was I, I just didn't want to like open up that wound I didn't want to like mm. feel, I didn't want to feel yeah. it. So mm -hmm. even in adulthood, yeah. you know, it, it makes, a, it made me rigid. It made me mm. like really rigid when it came to like things of, of, of the sexual nature and not even really just mm -hmm. like having like sexual intercourse. It was just mm -hmm. like me wanting to like express myself, you know, like, you know, a woman has breasts, has hips, mm. have legs or whatever. I didn't even want to like engage those areas mm. of myself, although they were yeah. there, they were there, right. but I just, I just, I just, I ain't going to say I ignored them, but it's just mm. the, yeah. the fact that I just didn't, didn't like regard it, uh, per se, right. for lack of yeah. a better term. So um, yeah. in this sexual confidence series that we're doing right now, um confidence whenever we discussed it in a in an earlier series we said that it's a firm trust a feeling of reliance or certainty and a sense mm. of self-reliance and boldness so mm. whenever you whenever you lack confidence in an area you're mm. you're just not you're just not relying upon that area 
to like be sufficient basically mm. you know so yeah. so my sexuality yeah. was just like totally like just like on a plateau of like dormancy you know i didn't mm. i didn't want i didn't want it to rise no higher and mm. if i could have pushed it down lower i would have pushed it down lower mm. so so mm. my experience early experience with sexuality was not a good experience and back in the mm. era when we grew up the uh, which my mom she would like talk to us about it but like mm -hmm. a lot of but you only got like bare minimum right bare minimum mm -hmm. you know just like just like don't have sex and get pregnant yeah. you know mm -hmm. not just for my mom or whatever but just the overall mm -hmm. essence of of the way that girls were taught back then mm -hmm. so it didn't really give you like a confidence on mm -hmm. the process it didn't give you a confidence mm -hmm. on the process of developing your femininity mm. and developing mm. your sexuality. Now, I'm not talking about mm. necessarily sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about right. sexual intercourse. Right. I'm just talking about mm. you growing up as a as a girl into mm. a woman. Just to be confident you know? in yourself. Mm -hmm. Be confident in yourself. Period. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. I mean, I mean, sexual confidence. It's something that's not really like talked about a whole lot because I see women right. and you can just tell that they're like, they're like turned inward in their yeah. sexual mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. They, they mm. don't want to like, they don't want to like, you know, they're just like, almost like a board, you know, like, like mm. a hard board. You ain't going to penetrate them in no kind of sexual femininity mm -hmm. way. You're not going to penetrate mm. it. So, mm. um, so yeah, I, I think that this and is that, a good topic. Comes, yes. What'd you say, Sean? I was saying the women that you were talking about, how it's hard to penetrate them is, is you know, they build that barrier. That comes right. from like a collection of experiences that they had. Mm -hmm. And like you say, right. it starts early on because not necessarily talking about sex because I didn't want my mom to teach me about sex. But how right. do you right. in these areas? You gave me this book. So mm -hmm. how do I, this is about me, right? So how, mm -hmm. do, I, how do I become confident in these areas? So mm -hmm. a collection of experiences had to happen mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. Rather, it turn out to be positive or negative or mm -hmm. natural or normal. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. With me, like, then my, like Didi said, her body started changing. You know, you go from looking mm -hmm. like a boy to looking like, okay, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a girl. So when my body started changing, I became self-conscious -con about it because, mm -hmm. not because I didn't like it, but because I noticed I started getting attention in a way that made me uncomfortable. Like especially mm, for exactly, me, like exactly. my experience with like older older men started paying more attention mm. to me than the boys my age, and that was uncomfortable to me. You know, like if they mm. would notice my breasts or my hips filling out or this that, and the other, so I became like self like conscious about that. Mm. That should not have been a bad thing mm. for me to feel, but it was a bad thing for them to do. So I felt bad. They weren't mm. doing what was normal in life, and that that mm. affected me. You know, so it, mm. it starts like that. That's like what Didi said, that, that brick wall, that solidity that happens is from a mm. collection of experiences that happen with us. Mm. Mm. Right. And Shonda, mm. you're right, because because it was like a lot of the older guys that were like giving me like like attention that I didn't want. But mm -hmm. if you really think about it, the younger guys that you, that's your age they're just coming into their own you know what i'm saying they're not they're not yeah. really paying attention to you at this point because they're they're trying to discover what's mm. going on with them you know but the older yeah. men mm -hmm. they're the ones that begin to see your breasts they're the ones that begin to see your hips they're the mm -hmm. ones that, that begin to like see you you know what i'm saying now now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about i'm talking about a um uh not 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 a i'm not talking mm -hmm. about all older men because some right. uh, I mean a lot of older men don't have a problem with that but I'm just talking about your exactly. your uh pedophiles mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. talking about your I'm not to say that older men don't don't notice you or see but that you're growing into mm -hmm. a woman but they don't have like bad thoughts toward mm -hmm. you you see exactly. what I'm saying they look mm -hmm. at you yeah. and and just say man she's growing into a pretty girl but they're not lusting yeah. after you in any kind of way mm -hmm. versus those yeah. that are that are uh predators who are who are yeah. like lusting after mm -hmm. you and they're like hunting you now. They're hunting mm -hmm. you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so Shana, mm -hmm. you made a good point right there. It it was a lot of like the older men that was like giving 
that would like look at me sometimes and I and I used to like be mean. I like roll my eyes at them or I'd be like, you ain't talking to me. You know, or, or I would just like, I would just like get into that mode. Mm -hmm. And even my brother growing up and everything, I would like look at guys like, oh, that's my brother. That's my brother, mm. you know, so I wouldn't have to acknowledge, you know, that they like me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, yeah so, mm. so it's 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 deep. I mean, and every woman mm. has a story. Every woman mm. has a story on what developed her into the woman that mm. she is today. Mm. I don't believe a lot mm. of women to be honest with you because a mm. lot of women right. have secrets that they're that they just not willing to let go of. It'll go to the grave with them. Mm -hmm. And some of my secrets yeah. that go to the grave with me. So, you know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I mean, but, but, yeah. but I'm talking about even like the bare minimum of an mm -hmm. of a, of a older woman teaching a younger girl how to be confident mm -hmm. in her sexuality. Yeah. You know, because, mm -hmm. because yeah. many girls yeah. are broken at this point and they were mm -hmm. broken as a young girl. So, so the older women yeah. should pay attention to this stuff and be ready to like help these girls mm -hmm. men so that they can like from this point on, become mm -hmm. a become a healthy adult when it mm -hmm. comes to their sexuality mm -hmm. whether you're big mm -hmm. little you know whether you're round fluffy or whatever mm -hmm. you still have okay. that femininity you still have that sex sexuality mm -hmm. you know you've been born a woman mm -hmm. you've been born a girl is what gave you this walk what gave you this privilege Mm. What gave you the ability mm. to have somebody like Chris? You know, you're the ones that, that have the wound that bear the child. You know what I'm saying? So if it wasn't right. for the woman's right. femininity and sexuality, Chris, you wouldn't even mm. be here today. So, yeah. <laughs> Correct. so Correct. on that point right there, <laughs> we're going to like let Chris do mm. some talking because, you know, me and Shonda just got that off our chest. So we're going to allow Chris uh -huh. to, uh, to do some talking on a uh, topic mm. that he brought to our attention like a couple of days ago yeah. when we had a Discussion. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, go ahead, yeah. bro. Well, can everybody hear me good? Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. My thing is this is um, and it's funny listening to you know, like we spoke on these things a little earlier before, and now to hear you guys is you guys mention again with a little more detail. It actually it really brought even more foundation to this thought that came up, and it's funny how you get a thought. And then, you know, that's how you know there's a God, because you get a thought, and God gives you a thought, and then you don't even really realize the thought you said till you go back and study it for yourself. So right. I went back and I even did some digger deeping into it, and I was like, oh my God, the words that popped up in the definitions was crazy. But um, I think it goes back to, again, um, what's normal versus what's natural. And I think so many times I, I noticed that both of you started mentioning walls. To me, those are categorizations. You're putting them in a certain categorization to where it doesn't infiltrate the other category. Right. When in reality, the 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 funneling or the or, or the book, you know, the funneling is actually natural. The book was normal. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we we have a tendency, and that's funny, right? It's funny, yeah. but but let me just share this one little story with you guys because. A lot of people think that all men want is to do it. You know, we just want that. You know, we just want to do it, do it, do it, do it. Tear as many people as we want when, <laughs> without understanding that it's, it's, it's ironic. But I want to share a little story. I want to share something with you because when I was younger, you know, we always hear about the stories of young, of, of young women being found by men and different things like that. Or, you know, but, you know, there are a lot of men that have been touched by women more so than men, too. You know, most of the time when they think of young boys being touched, they automatically gravitate that, categorize it to a man. But you don't even believe, you wouldn't even know that the most promiscuous men that are out there, the chances are were touched by a woman. Okay. Wow. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing that's ironic because when I was young, you know, and as I was growing up, if we can go here, I'm going to go where we got to go, but if it's all right um, for the audience. But when I started first noticing my genitalia and different things like that, you know, I just noticed that it, it would get hard, you know, and it would grow from its normal size. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the time, that was just funny to us, waking up and it's stiff and things <laughs> like that. But it wasn't until now, wa now watch the natural versus normal. So, but it wasn't until one day I was, I had that feeling and it was long and it got, and it got hard and 
I was laying down on a King Kong dog that I had. I had a King Kong stuffed animal. It was a, really a gorilla, but it was King Kong back. You, if you was from the 70s, you remember when King Kong came out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and it was just this feeling that when the King Kong dog touched it, you know, that mm, now it started making me want to rub it. You right. know what I'm saying? More right. and more and more. And then all of a sudden, I got this feeling like this euphoria that hit me. And it was like, oh, my God, this feeling is incredible. Watch what I just said. In the beginning, I just noticed it because it was doing that for years. But it wasn't until something else touched it that created a different type of sensation that I've never had before. Right. So a, a lot of women don't understand, and a lot of people don't understand it. For young boys, we're not after the girl. Mm. We're after that feeling. Mm. Because that feeling is the, like a feeling that we can't get nowhere else. And most young, young guys, most boys, experience that feeling at an early age. Okay. And we're acting like crackheads, we're chasing that feeling because in the reality, when you orgasm, right? Mm -hmm. It is the euphoria that you hit is a hundred times greater than heroin. Mm -hmm. So now right. if you took heroin and made heroin a hundred times potent, you'll die from it, correct? Yes. You would yeah. die. You would literally die from, from the purest form of heroin. You would die, okay? Well, you're getting that with that feeling. Wow. That's the natural essence that God put inside of you. To self, that's why it, we don't need outside things to, to we don't need drugs because God put it in us already. We don't need Amen. these things. You see what I'm saying? Because it's got God already naturally put these things inside of us. It's about at what age you get connected with it in your mind. Okay. So now I'm just in hunt for that feeling from the time I'm five years old. I'm in hunt for that feeling. This is at five. So while I'm in the, so then I start realizing, wait a minute, I get that feeling when I hunch on the arm of the couch. Oh my God, I get this feeling, you know what I'm saying? When I'm, when I'm rubbing, when I'm in the tub and I'm washing, you see what I'm saying? This feeling comes over me. So uh -huh. I'm now, but now watch when natural, now that's a natural experience. That's a natural coming into something, right? Right. Watch when it becomes averted and the normal kicks in. Because one day I got caught hunching, what we used to call hunching. I was hunching yeah, the yeah, arm yeah. of the couch and got, and got caught. And I was like, I think I was like six, and I got caught by a woman that caught me. She was babysitting us. Now, I just knew I was going, I was in trouble because I'm naked. I'm on the arm of her couch. She was a babysitter, you know, but instead of punishing me, I'll never forget I was watching Scooby-Doo, you know, and it was a, it was, it was, I, I didn't go to school because I wasn't feeling well, you know, so I was sick. So I, I know I was in like, I was like kindergarten going into first grade somewhere in there, okay? So what she did was she bought me in her room. Her husband was, or boyfriend, whoever that guy was, was laying beside her um, sleep. He was, he was knocked out. And she put me on top of her and said, do, the, do on top of me what you were doing on that couch. Wow. So now, so now, now I got to understand. I'm like five or six years old. I'm like six years old in here. Okay. So now she's like, okay, put your mouth on this. She gives me a breath. She gives me all these parts and is telling me, but just keep doing it. So now, do you see the normal starting to kick in now? For my nap, now I'm no longer naturally coming into this thing as I should. Someone is teaching it to me. Someone is teaching me yeah. something that's immoral because she shouldn't even be doing this with me. Right, right? I was child yeah. abuse. So, but, but here's the thing. I love the way it felt, so to me it wasn't abuse. Right, but you because have, there you is have no, the capacity to know that. No, but I love that feeling. Now right. watch right. what happens. Right. So as I go along, you know, and I'm seeing my sister's friends and some of the other older girls, and right, and they they used to always be in this little group huddle. So now because of this woman, I'm looking at them, and I'm noticing right. they don't have big breasts, but they do have that. <laughs> she had, you understand? Right. So now right. while they're playing and jumping rope, and the 17 year olds do have something, now 
I'm hunching this wall we used to have where we could watch them and look at them play. I'm hunching that wall because I'm watching them. Because now I'm relating the feeling to that to that woman. So right, now, right. then I end up, you see what I'm saying? See the pattern, how it starts going? So now, yeah. now what ends up happening, like I said, is so now I'm this guy who's now becoming an adult growing up. And I'm hearing the guys talk. And I'm hearing the older guys talk about, oh, you ain't never done that. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? You, you still young. You don't know. You know, little, little joke that men make to a younger, younger guy. You know what I'm saying? But then I started listening to him. I watched the sexual confidence because I'm hearing them talk about what they would like to do mm-hmm. to the girl. Mm-hmm. Well, what you think it did for my ego and confidence? Because I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So all the stuff that they're talking about, they want to do to the girl. Oh, look at that girl. But man, I would do this and do And I'm sitting there like, oh, I've done that. Right. <laughs> I've done that. I've done this. So my confidence is through the roof because I, at the age of seven, think I'm six and seven, think I am a big man. Because the yeah. bigger guys aren't even doing what I'm doing. You get what I'm, you get what I'm saying? Right. So now yeah. my confidence is through the roof. I'm approaching anyone, any female, any. So my sister's friends, I was hunching. I was hunching just whatever I could, you know, get, you know, playing hide and go get it, those kind of things. But I want to get to this essence about this, why I say about this natural and normal. I know I went a long way, but I wanted everyone to understand how something that's a natural thing can now become a normal thing. We say, well, normal and natural is the same thing, correct? Well, even like you guys, I told you, I went back and I did some studies, right? So uh, I want you to pay attention to these words that I, that I found, okay? This is when okay. something is natural, okay? The, definitional, the definition of natural is existing in or caused by nature. So what I want you to do there is I want to put that nature and I want to turn that God, okay? That's God's ordained plan, okay? His will, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Not made or caused by humankind. So when someone says, you see what I'm saying? So when someone says it's natural to do this and do this, let's make sure that we haven't attached the humankind to it. Because if you attach humankind to it and say human, because remember those guys started telling me, oh, you ain't did this. You ain't, you still young. You don't know what you're doing. Something. Well, that's according to your human standards. <laughs> but naturally, I've done all those things. Right. So you're, now watch this though. But then I looked at normal. Now, this key word is going to stick out to you guys, and, it's, and it has a scripture that goes with it that Christ tells us. But when you're normal, we always say, man, we need to get back to the norm. People need to get, this is the new norm, or we need to get back to the norm, correct? Well, normal means conforming to a standard, usual or typical or expected. Now, last I checked, Christ said, be not conformed to this world. Yes. But be transformed in your true natural state. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, I think what ends up happening to a lot of people's sexual confidence, um, and this goes with everything, I think even, be, even to any form of confidence, is that confidence is based on what is the new normal and what we consider normal and no longer based on what's natural. Because at right. one point, before we got to the stage where we are now, where women get their breasts augmented and get their butts implanted and all that stuff, Remember before the key was all about just makeup, right? It was about how well you put yeah. your makeup on and things like that. Yeah. So it went from, but watch this, none of those things are what naturally is what gravitates men to women. Not her makeup, not her, not the augmentation and all those. Those aren't the things that generally really gravitate to us that people think that do, but they really don't. And those men that do, that will say to me, and argue with me and say, well, no, he lied. That stuff turned me on. I didn't say what turned you on. I said what's right. natural. Because someone has told you that's supposed to turn you on. But in reality, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? In the reality, what you're, what you're actually looking for when you're looking at that, when we're looking at a woman, remember I said, you're getting away from just that feeling to men don't develop the emotional connection and all that stuff we're supposed to have for women till later on. And you know That's what, why they Chris? say we mature you know what, folks. Bruh? You know what, Chris? When you were talking first, 
what came mm -hmm. to my mind whenever you were saying even how as a young boy, you know, y'all already have that, you know, y'all might get that feeling, you know, in y'all's genitals mm -hmm. and stuff. And then as you grow mm -hmm. older and everything, you know, you're looking for that, for that feeling. And yes. women and girl and women, girls, grown women, that's a very key point that can keep you protected because you got to realize and you got to like make sure that that man or you know is not just merely looking for a feeling you mm -hmm. know just right. that feeling you know Correct. that orgasm and and he's really ready to like be in a relationship with you you know like you just said chris Correct. you know he he may not even connect the emotional to that for a long time even mm -mm. if he ever connect the emotional and women right. are more so emotional they're coming mm -hmm. up, they're coming up. It's like the, the two sexes are coming up with two different mm -hmm. agendas. Mm -hmm. and, correct, correct. And, and from what you were saying, you know, um, like how I, how um, like in our earlier conversations, how I was talking about like the Nicki Minaj's and the, you know, the mm -hmm. Cardi B's and the Beyonce's mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm just trying to think of some, some pop stars mm -hmm. of today or whatever, but. Right, right. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you pay attention to the nakedness of these girls, right. I mean, I mean, they opening their legs up, you know, because they're like, they're like, number one, they're, they're mm -hmm. catering to that sexual desire, that feeling in the men. The feeling. Mm -hmm. The feeling in the men, but they're also, they're also, mm -hmm. you know, like, like messing with the psychological of the woman mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. because the natural tendency of a woman is not all of that. Mm -hmm. They they not getting ready to be opening their legs up and to any you mm -hmm. know Tom Dick and Harry. No. They're not getting ready no. to be you know showing their breasts. They're not getting ready mm -hmm. to be gyrating and doing all no. of this stuff. That's just not no. natural. So no. so what these what these um women are doing, even the males that that's doing it. You know you have your um, Trey songs mm -hmm. them. You know they always taking off their shirts and mm -hmm. you know trying to flex mm -hmm. their you know mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know they're only they're they're only appealing to the the mm -hmm. normalcy the new norm right. that's in women now because i mean in girls because like like mm -hmm. in me and shonda's them era and a whole bunch of other women yeah. i look at people like that and be like man he need to put his shirt back on they, it don't affect me like that because i'm I right. still have a, have a natural um uh, upbuild and a, and a building right in that. and um, right but like the Nicki minajs and the beyonce's and all that you know the gyrating now I really mm -hmm. like from from what you just said, it really mm -hmm. lets me know that that whenever these women are doing that, which mm -hmm. I already knew they were like nasty and stank yeah. to mm -hmm. me, but whenever right. they're doing this, they're catering to the to that feeling that men are looking for and chasing after because yeah. guess what? I bet you uh, the man ain't gonna be all slobbering and stuff for these people in front of their wives. No, no, it's almost no. like a stripper. It's almost like a legal, yeah. a legal um, prostitute slash stripper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just showing yeah. what they got, and there and there, and you're selling your soul to them. You're selling your soul mm -hmm. to them in the form of like the lust. And then you go Let, back and try to get mm -hmm. your wives to do that same. You know, then then it kind of creates mm -hmm. the 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 wedge mm -hmm. because it, it's it's putting like this spirit of lust and perversion in this man. And mm -hmm. now his natural wife, mm -hmm. his natural wife, a lot of times can't even like compete with them because mm -hmm. she's not even in that arena. Let, let me let me give you let me give you a good let me give you a good a good way to to break that down what you just said with this normal and natural, okay? Because yes. normally a stripper, you're in the club. Normally you're in the club, right? That female is stripping. If you're a male, you're stripping. If you're, whether you're male or female, you're stripping, you're taking off your clothes, right? That's the normal in the strip club, right? Right. So if while you're in the, and while you're in that strip club, you are letting men, men up. Men or women are groping. The, if it's women, they're groping the man's genitalia, they're rubbing all over his chest, all those kind of things. If you're in the feet, if you're the female stripping, the male is groping you on your breast. He's trying to touch your your your, your privacy parts as well, right? So all this is going on in the normalness of the strip club, right? Well, then answer me this. If that's what you're supposed to be doing, why is it that when you leave the strip club and someone wants to look at your breast and try to pull your shirt down, you're ready to press charges and smack the hand away? Because naturally, you know that's not right. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. That's, why, that's why it's like, you know, if that's the case, then why do you put on clothes? Why are you offended when men just walk up and smack you on your butt when you're not at the job? 
because you have even disconnected in your mind what is normal versus what is natural. And more people are gravitating to what's normal and it's taking them outside of the will that God has for their life naturally. So now they're doing everything they're doing to compete for the reward. A, a, good, a good saying that was told to me a long, long time ago by, by an older gentleman, he told me one time, you learn a lot from the old school. I love listening to the, to the old school guys. And they always said to me, they said, Chris, you tell a girl you love her to get sex. A woman gets sex to get told she, she's loved. Wow. Did you just catch that? Wow. Did you just catch that? But I can see that. I can see it. <laughs> That's why, like, with a man, with, with us men, we're then taught, okay, tell her you'll go with her. Tell her you'll be a boyfriend. But we're still just in pursuit of the feeling. So now we're telling you we like you. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> now we're telling you we want you. We don't. <laughs> now we're telling you that we, we want to build a life. We don't. <laughs> we just want the feeling. Because at that time, whatever you use to attract me is what I'm going after. So wow. if you use sexuality to, to, to attract me, don't be offended because all I want is your sexuality. You did not offer me your confidence. You did not offer me your brain. You did not offer me your heart. You didn't know what you did, like you just used. You showed me a poster with your legs open in a bikini with a thong, and now you expect me to want something other than that? I can see it. You I can see it. So, uh -huh. so this is where women say men are dogs. No, we're not dogs. We are a, it's in our nature to want to spread and multiply. It's in our nature to have sex, okay, to, to, to multiply. But when we see you, you turn off our thoughts about multiplying and being fruitful with you to just wanting to feel it. So it's, it's you that's reducing us, not us reducing you. So if you knew what men go through in order to get what you presented to us, oh, my God. Do you, why you think? We go, okay, you say we got to have the bag. To get in between your legs? Okay, well, let me go work harder. Let me go make some more money. Let me go sell drugs. Let me go do whatever it takes to make the money. Because that's what you told me. You want So when you when women are talking about, he got to have a bag. He got to get the bag. What can he offer me? What can he give me? Okay, that's all you want. I'll go get that. But when I get that feeling over with, because you know what I do with that King Kong dog? Well, Every time I grabbed it is when I wanted that feeling. Wow. <laughs> After that. It no longer became my favorite toy. It was only, I only wanted to play with it. Now watch what I just said. It was a King Kong doll. It was meant to be operated like King Kong. <laughs> but now I've reduced my King Kong doll <laughs> to, a, to, a, to a feeling. That the only time I want to pick it up, only time I want to play with it is when I want that feeling, just like the woman. If the only time, that's the only time I want to play with you is when I want that feeling. Now, women, women, I mean, you need to really like pay attention to what he is telling you because he he's speaking truth and he's speaking uh he, he's speaking something that can be a game changer if you listen to him. Mm -hmm. He he's speaking a mm -hmm. game changing move. I'm telling you, he's speaking a game changing move. Yeah. Yesterday while I was at, yes, I'm sorry, Sean, would you want to say something? I'm sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. No, I, I was just saying, yes. No, no. Okay. okay. Even while I was at the mall yesterday, right, I'm at the mall and I'm looking around and I'm watching, right? And I watched this guy. Now watch this. And it tickled me because I'm watching this guy. This, um, this guy's going down the elevator, right? Uh, the escalator, right? And I caught him looking at my wife's butt, right? <laughs> so when, when I, finally, I'm looking at him, watching him watch my wife's butt. So when he finally looks at me and catch, sees I'm watching him, right? He goes, hmm, he puts his head down, right? Now, most men would have been like, then why are you violating? Why are you, you, you doing this and doing that? No, that's what he's supposed to do. <laughs> that's what he's supposed to do. But when it gets disrespectful is when we start adding the normalcy. You know, now nah, tell her, holler at her. Because now the new normal is holler at somebody who's already taken. See what I'm, you, you, do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. if, if, if it's all in how you're presenting yourself to us, that's making us real. So when he saw me and he knows, notice. Now, 
He probably could have kicked my butt. I don't know. But the way when he saw me catch him, the way he so embarrassed and start looking down, you know what I'm saying? It let me know that he recognized something that's a natural trait and it's called right. dominant and it's called territory. Right. So when he right. saw me catch him, he understood that territory taken and I might not be dominant enough to take that. So fear made him look away. You see what I'm saying? What respect, because if you were respectful, you wouldn't have been looking at her anyway like that, right? So what we have to do, we have to get out of this, this normal and we need to get back to what's natural women and men because us men, I said this to you guys over and over, have no idea what we go through just to get somebody to stimulate something other than that feeling. We are in pursuit of someone that can do something. That's why we don't need you for that feeling. We got hands. We, we've, been, we've been taught through the new norm. Men have taught us all along. I remember growing up as a kid. If, oh, masturbating is normal. Since when? <laughs> how is that normal? <laughs> how, is, how is jacking off, spilling your seed on the ground normal? <laughs> when it has a purpose. It can't be. No, we just talked about natural. Humankind don't have nothing to do with it. So when you got to literally spill your seed to the ground, man, it, your seed has a purpose of where it's supposed to go. So when you just let it waste in the ground or waste in the condom, you are not doing what's natural. I ain't like that. Because now everybody wants to say, well, you're supposed to wear a condom. We're taught that because we're taught to sleep with so many different individuals. Yeah, because it's the sexual sin. The sin, you cover, you right. cover up the sins. Correct. When what we just need to do is, what would happen? So so here, let, me give you, let me give you guys an analogy, a kind of, well, not an analogy, but an example of what we do, okay? Because you know how they say a woman knows if she's going to give you something from the first time she meets you, you know how they say that? You know how women say that? Um, a lot of times with men, women know when, a man, when they're going to give a man something when they, first, when they first lay eyes on. Well, guess what? We know when we first lay eyes on you whether we want to give you our whole world or not. <laughs> we know that, too. Well, so, whether y'all want to give us the whole world, uh, your whole world? Uh, notice, I said our whole world, because yeah. I'm operating naturally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not working in this normal, this world that don't exist. I can only, I can only offer you what's in my world. Well, God is ability, gave me the ability to provide for you. You see what I'm saying? So when I look at a woman, I can tell if I want to offer that to her or not from the first time I lay eyes on her. So that's, <laughs> how, like you know, you that's how you know. So, that's how a man knows what category to put her in. Is that true? Exactly. Ex exactly. So what we do now, so what we do now is here's some of the preparative things that we do. Y'all going to get me kicked out of the man club. Y'all going to get my card revoked. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to do this because I have a daughter. Right. So I have a daughter now. You see what I'm saying? Two of them. Yeah. Well, three, excuse me, three of them. I got three daughters. So mm -hmm. I need this to get out there. So they won't be tricked. Okay. But um the thing I the thing that we as men will do when we know it's a normal, we just want to screw you or whatever, we try to tap into nothing but your life. We just want to know. That's why we ask you, well, what do you like to eat at? What type of food do you like? We don't care. We just want to know where to take you. <laughs> you know, what kind of movie you like? Okay. We just want to know so we can take you there. Because we're only focused on your life. Okay. When we just want to hit. You know what I'm saying? But when we want to give you our world, when we really want to give you, we, we pay more attention to your dislikes. So we actually want to know deeper, more things about you that operate in the things you don't like. So you notice when a guy is really into you, he asks you the questions that he won't ask you when he's just wanting to hit. You know when a guy just wants to get some. Come on, women, y'all. Don't act like y'all don't, like y'all ain't never been around. Oh, yeah, baby. we know. Right, come we here, know. Quick. You know, come on. Well, you're, you're, you know, but then you also can yeah. tell that guy that really want to get to, that really want to offer you his world. Because the guy that want to offer you his world, he's more timid. He's more nervous. 
That's because, and watch this. Remember when I talked about the dominance of the natural, like an attribute like an animal kingdom? That's because we know you belong to God. And we're attempting to try to woo you <laughs> and woo God to bring you to us. So we're a lot more afraid. That's why we're a little more nervous. We might stutter a little bit in our, when we're talking to you. You know what I'm saying? When it, you know in the beginning? Because that's the guy that wants to share his world with you. <laughs> the guy that don't want to share with, his world with you and just wants to hit, he ain't worried about God and nobody. <laughs> he just coming straight for you. That's when he talks to you disrespectful. Hey, come here, baby. Lie, let me. Girl, that boy looking good on you. Girl, come here, mom. Let me talk to you. See what I'm saying? Look at that. And we think that's a confidence. That's not a confidence. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? But when you're really confident, the beginning of wisdom, which is confidence, is what? To fear God. It's fear. Mm -hmm. So if that man ain't nervous when he approached you, chances are <laughs> he's not worried about sharing his world with you. <laughs> you know, because a man that's really confident to share his world is nervous, fear. Because the wisdom, the wisdom that it takes is fearful. Because he can't just come to you any kind of way. He can't just say anything to you. You get what I'm saying? But again, because I don't want to get away from what you guys brought me on here for. No, no, no. But, this is good, Chris. This is good. You know? This is good. But the reason I say it's natural versus normal is because we have abandoned what's not. When a woman first naturally looks at a man, she looks to see if he's a protector, a provider. Matter of fact, my pastor broke it down into these five Ps. And I, and I love that he broke it down into these five Ps. So ladies that are out there, you should be looking for these five Ps in a man. Yes. I can't believe yes. I'm doing this. Somebody's going to end up, somebody's going to end up. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That, hey, hey, we, got my car we got your back. We got your Okay. Yeah. There's five Ps to a man, women, that you should be looking for. Okay. First thing you want to look for naturally is what? A provider. Right? Mm -hmm. You're looking for someone that can provide, and that providing is not the guy that can put you in a Lamborghini truck, not the guy that can put you in a Range Rover. That's not providing. Providing is being able to make sure that he can accommodate the essential needs that you required by God, that are required by God in order to make sure you're good <laughs> and taken care of. That's what providing is. Not, it's not my job to put you in the biggest house. It's my job to put a roof over your head. You understand? It's not my job to put you in the fanciest car. That's not the provider. It's to make sure that if you need a mode of transportation, that we have that covered. You understand what I'm saying? The next thing from the provider. Next thing you want to do is what? You want to have, you want to be what? A protector. Women look for men. That's why a lot of women are steered in the wrong direction because the new norm is to like the, the, the thug guy, the, what we call the bad boy. Women love bad boys. No. The what you're really, looking for, really what you're looking for is a protector. You're just looking for somebody because in the animal kingdom, that's what the female looks for before she mates. She makes sure that he can protect. <laughs> that he can, in other words, and protect you have. Not, not by fighting another rival male. Mm. Okay. Watch this, man. I'm about to. This is about to blow your mind. <laughs> the protection has nothing to do with this, because for men, men think this is the protection we're talking about. No, the protection is the governing and the protection of your soul mm. to make sure mm. that no outside entity, the enemy, can never penetrate or harm you and who you are as a woman to me. Watch that word, woman. I love that word. I love that word. That's one of my favorite words because you feel it down in your gut. But he can, <laughs> he can protect that. You understand what I'm saying? That's what he got to do. Okay? So we, get, we got what? We got the provider. We got the protector. Protector. Right? Okay. The next thing you should be, and this is, what, this is the other thing, is, and everybody loves this, the pleaser. He should be able to please you. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you think pleasing. He better be good in the bed. That's the pleasing we think about. That's not the pleasing that God thinks about. The pleasing that God thinks about is him having the willingness to do for you what God himself will do for you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, right? 
His son came down, and because he loved the bride, which was to be the church so much, he did what? He died for it. And not only did he die from it, he got up for it, too. Mm -hmm. He got back up for it. So as that pleaser, you're supposed to be able to die for her and live for her at the same time. <laughs> God, this is crazy. But... Now, these are the other two, and I say these two on purpose for last, because most people want me to go more in depth with the pleaser and all that stuff, but no. <laughs> this is the part of the natural that we have made no longer norm, that this is this is fitting the norm anymore. But it's the most key essential part of the natural, okay? The next thing he should be, he should be a priest of his house. He should be yeah. able to cover his house through prayer. Prayer is what? Answers. So the same way you go to God for answers, that man should be able to give you answers when you're in trouble. He should be able to have answers for you when you're in need of something because his answers are coming from the one that created you. So if he has no relationship with the one that created you, how can he know what to, how to answer you? You'll be right. full of questions <laughs> while you're with him. Then the last, and the, the last one is he should be a prophet. Now you say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Chris, you're going too far. No, a prophet is a visionary. <laughs> he just sees ahead. <laughs> so he should be able to foresee where y'all going. If he can't see where y'all are going, how can he possibly be for you? So to see those five Ps you need yes. to ask? Yeah. Now, 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 if you notice, three of them, you can switch into the normal and trick some people with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but them last two, they have nothing to do with humankind. <laughs> them last two, if you ain't got that from God, it ain't in you. <laughs> you got to get that straight from him. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again, again, my thing is, let's get out of the normal. <laughs> let's stop the normal. Because it's conforming us to accept. Conform means to just accept what it is, what's going on. This normal is causing us to accept things that in normal, that in reality, you should never be accepting. So that's why I was watching this program, D, and this is going to light you up, Sean and D. I was watching this program, and I'm going to show you the minds of the young people, okay? I'm talking about those that are 25, between 18 to 25, okay? Okay. Let me show you the mentality of the young ones now. They was doing a survey, and at the survey, they would say, what would you rather have? A man that's broke, doesn't have a lot of money, but is faithful, or a man that has a lot of money, but is not faithful. And do you know them women? Now, it was a panel of, I think it was six of them up there. Four. Four. One man, three women. Four of them chose they'd rather have a rich man that cheat on them what? Than, a, than a man that broke you know because you know we determine broke now if you don't have a lot of money you're broke i, I never trust me i've been broke i've been homeless <laughs> you got a job you provide you're not broke i know i'm broke is, you know but, but you but know you what see? um but yes okay. what do you yes. think about that norm i, I like to know, know from you guys what's you your thoughts what? on that you know what the um the the way that women are today I mean, even like the younger generation, I believe that they're mm -hmm. just seeing a lot of the digression in relationships, a lot of marriages that are ending in divorce. They're seeing mm -hmm. like the way that these players, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be male, female, you know, it's just players on the playing field, you know? So mm -hmm. I believe that that age group is just mm -hmm. seeing a lot of stuff that's like hopeless. So, so mm -hmm. it's almost like, because I remember at one point, I think I was in my late twenties, Mm -hmm. to early 30s because I had even like, like like come to the conclusion excuse me where mm -hmm. I where I said you know what I you know how they say marry for love but then mm -hmm. some people were saying marry for money it's almost mm -hmm. like for a brief moment I got to the to the um mindset where I said I'm gonna marry for money because mm. love is just like unobtainable but it's not mm. unobtainable it's, it was the mindset come on because love mm -hmm. would never be unobtainable because Huh? Mm -hmm. it, goes to, it goes to what Chris said. That's a, a good example too. The yeah. um, mm -hmm. normal versus natural. 
Right. So the mm-hmm. natural part, you did believe in it once upon a time. Right. You weren't born not believing in it. That was natural. Mm-hmm. But because right. of what the world have, has implanted into you and your experiences, you went to what you thought was normal. Mm. So the whole thing is, I don't believe in love. I'm, I'd rather marry for money at this point because love is not real. That's what you thought mm. was normal because naturally you believed in it once upon a time. So that's mm. a good example that Chris is speaking on too. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right, but those young, you know, the younger generations and stuff, especially, you know, the mm-hmm. the, the the natural confidences that should be mm-hmm. out there, they're totally oblivious to it. They don't even, mm-hmm. a lot of them are not being brought up in those same standards. Mm-hmm. Not to say it's not the right. standards right. anymore, but because mm-hmm. the ball is right. being dropped before, you know, mm-hmm. now it's just like something is going to have to jolt them and bring them back mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. To that truth, mm-hmm. because our generation, you know, we grew up with parents who who still had standards, you know, to an extent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They still had the standards, but the more the mm-hmm. generations go down, those those standards started digressing. That in the you know, social, you're absolutely social right. fabric. You're you're absolutely right, and I think that what needs to start happening too, sis, is and this just came to me as you guys were talking is. We've, we're starting to get confused what an answer is versus an explanation. Just because you could give an explanation doesn't make it the answer. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And so many people have an explanation, not an answer. So when you ask them certain things, they give you the explanation. <laughs> I didn't ask you for that. I asked you, was it right or wrong? Right. Not you guys. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, because each one, when they got ready to answer the supposed to be answering the question, which one they'd rather have, they gave an explanation, not the answer. They just like, well, what is the guy that's both gonna be able to show me? I need to be you giving me explanations, you're not giving me an answer. And we spend so much time. And the Bible is clear. And I know I revert to the word of God all the time, but that's my that's the standard in which I live by. That's the natural in me. Right. You know? But when it's all said and done, you know, the Bible is clear. The word of God says. You know, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is no maybe. There's no exp- There's no explanation. When something yeah. is wrong, it's wrong. When something That's is right, right, it's right. That's there's right. no. I don't care how well you can explain it. <laughs> what you've done is what you've done. <laughs> right. You get what I'm saying? So right. I think we spend. So now we think our explanations make something the truth, so we can explain why. So because I can explain it, I just sat in and explained. What I went through younger as a child, you just explained. Sean, you just explained. Does it make it the answer? (laughs) It's just the explanation of what took place. Right. The answer is, the answer is, and this is what's scary. Here's what's scary, y'all. The thing that's scary is most of the time, by the time we get the answer, we're all out of explanation. That's the scary part. Because now, how do I explain why, uh, why I would have a porn addiction? How do you explain that now? When all these years, my answer has always been because from the time I was young, nobody told me, Chris, yes, that's going to happen. Yes, that feeling is good, but it's meant for this, the answer. Right, right. But because no one explained it to me, I was just told I was fast. I was told I needed to slow down. Then, the, then as I got older, I was told I needed to do more of it. <laughs> so which one is it? Do I slow down, wait till I get older, or when I get older, do more of it? Which one is it? <laughs> am I, am well, I, you know, I, 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 I hate to go there, but I just I'm, I don't know no other way to be but real with a real. No, but that that's good. That's good because like like in um, the Song of Solomon, it's the scripture. Um, it was saying like, "Don't awaken love before it's time." Yes. You know, so so even as as young children who are like caught up in maybe perversions for even mm-hmm. generational stuff or, or mm-hmm. you know, being raped or maybe like being fondled. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. like it's not love that's been awakened, but it, it's, it's that it's that essence that goes with that. You right. Know right. So it's a you company open it up and you don't it. you don't know how to explain it or you don't understand it, but it's been awakened. Right. You know, it's been awakened, Correct. but Correct. it's been awakened mm-hmm. prematurely and incorrectly. Mm-hmm. So now you're you're getting ready Correct. to embark on this journey of of an unwakened, an unwakened love, an unwakened sense, 
sensual uh-huh. feeling that's not even supposed mm-hmm. to be a part of you yet. And, and, and the enemy, and let me help you out with and what's so what's so what's so incredible about the enemy, I give him his just due. Because if anyone understands how to raise single parent kids, the devil does. The devil does real well. Yeah. Because he made sure I was raised in love. Because <laughs> he kept me away from anything that could teach me what real love was. So he kept me around lust. Okay, I'm going to raise him around these other old, um, younger girls that may be a little bit nice. Instead of them being a grown woman, where his sister tell on, told, come my sister told. And that's how we know she was no longer our babysitter. And that was pissing me off, whatever. You know, but back then you didn't press charges for stuff like that. Things were different back then. Now you probably she'd have probably been put in prison. But back then that's not how things went. Not saying it was right, but I'm just saying. But the what but then he makes sure that you're raised in that lust. So now he brings me some that maybe just three years older than me, maybe a little older than me. But they want the feeling too. So I'm in there. You see what I'm saying? Then he brings me around other people who are talking to me about how that makes me a man. And, oh, man, you got it that young, man. That's what's up. Cause we're applauded it with a badge of honor for that kind of stuff. So you end up being raised like a single parent because you don't have the other parents to balance it out. You don't have that. You see what I'm saying? That answer. That, Like I said, I don't want to turn it into that. But the bottom line is, I just want to say this. Um, but now... Do you see how it affects the sexual confidence? So some men now are broken because they've been told they thought they two minute brothers, but they got a lot of money. <laughs> see how awful that is? What does that matter? When in reality, that's all it takes to make more children. <laughs> to, to, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to go 30 minutes, men. So, but we're told that we're not men. Wow, go ahead. Sir. I see you. I see your lip. I see you, sis. No, you. no, I no, you're ready no, to jump no. In I was, I was, I was thinking whenever you were saying that, 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 that's yeah. the way that the normal, the new normal is because, because it's such mm-hmm. a, it's such a um, pageant, pageantry. You know, it's almost like, mm-hmm. like, like putting together a whole service. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. like what, like 20 minutes of foreplay. You get your yes. first drink of wine, then you get your foreplay, and then you know, and then all it is, and then I mean, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, and, and not even almost. I mean, you know, I mean, the way that this the normal is, it's just mm-hmm. like okay, I got to get ready to do this, and it's not just for duty and 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 just for what it's really intended for. It's become a whole nother spectacle, and not saying even in with your spouses and everything that you can't have like like fun. Yeah. You Marriage bed, you know, stuff to. like that. But to. I'm I'm just talking about it does go from a natural to that mm-hmm. just that norm. You know what I'm saying? And that right. norm that's like it's, it's gonna wear you out. It's gonna wear you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if it that, if I mean can do yeah. what he needs to do, if everybody can do what they need to do in, in four minutes, five minutes, then do it and get just go on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless mm-hmm. unless it's just like you know, something else or whatever, but but you don't need all of that. You don't need all of that mm-hmm. because it makes you into a mm-hmm. performer. It may just like just like correct, the, and I'll I'll equate it to even like even like performing. You know, like even like some, and this is off the subject a little bit. You know, like singer. You know, like church wise. You know, you you get mm-hmm. so you get so much into the norm until what's natural becomes a performance. It becomes correct. a performance now. You know, it's no correct. longer just like that natural. Correct leading you know it becomes a performance right. the same way you know right. mental sexual physical emotional mm-hmm. and what's the mm-hmm. other one spiritual spiritual yeah. you know it's mm-hmm. a natural but then it's that it's that norm mm-hmm. that you get into that makes right. it a performance now mm-hmm. right it's a performance. right you're, you're you're absolutely right I, and and, it, and it's and it's and it's almost to the point where it's like it's so much to do. You, it's, it takes so much in our mental to totally deconstruct that. See, yeah. because what some people want to do is they want to keep parts of it when you have to destroy the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, one, one smidget of yeast, the Bible says, destroys the whole loaf. So one smidget. So some people be like, well, I'm going to keep this part. Like when they're in the matter. 
I listen to him say, well, I'm going to keep this far because we got to keep it spicy. Wait a second. I think that's the new norm. You mean her alone isn't spicy enough? Right. The accomplishments y'all have obtained together, the victories y'all have won together, the trenches and the wars that y'all have been through together and overcome ain't spicy enough? Right. So now what we do is I watch these new norms and I'm listening to, I'm listening to our future generation. They're talking about, and, I, and, and women, please get this. Cause you'd be like, well, I rather, I rather give my husband a threesome that way I'm there. And at least I'm there. And if I'm there, at least I can watch it. It's not the same as cheating. See that normal. Mm. <laughs> See how we take and explained it, but that's not mm. the answer. Right. No, he's not right. with you. No, he's not with you. Get that out of your head. Let, let me look at me, women. <laughs> he is not with you. <laughs> Get that let out me of your head. to you, women. <laughs> let me help you understand something. When a man is addicted to porn, and after he watches it and comes in there with you, he's not with you either. He's with what he just saw. <laughs> so, and he's just using you to get off. He like just that, using like that, you. Like that gorilla, like King Kong dog. Exactly. You and you think you got it under control because, well, <laughs> at least he's with me. <laughs> he's not with you. Not really. So, so what, we have to, what I want you guys to understand, and men, stop bankrupting, bankrupting your life. Stop working your sweat, yourself to the bone to achieve something for a woman that if she don't have in herself to give herself, you will never be able to give it to her. Mm. See, because a lot of times we talk about the one, what the women, you know, they go in there. Because you ever watching a threesome? Why that man don't ever want another guy involved? Right. <laughs> you ever ask that question? <laughs> Women that, that still like, okay, well, he's with me. But why he don't mind if you bring a dude in? <laughs> but, and, and Chris, even more, I, 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 mm -hmm. um, someone had posed the question one time a while back about like, like even like threesomes and or like porn and stuff, the male and the female, you know, having sex and men looking at the porn. Who yeah. are you really getting off on? Who's who are you who's, really getting off on? Who are you yeah. really getting off on? He yeah. can't be with. Do you not notice he's different when he's touching you? Do you not notice there's a difference mm -hmm. in how he's speaking to you now? Mm -hmm. So my thing is this. I said it earlier and I said it again. Stop explaining the answer. If it's the, if it's a yes, it's a yes. You know, the thing that I had to come, in the con to come to the idea is and come to the realization is that what happened at a young age is still battling today. <laughs> I'm still battling with it today. Yeah. You know what I'm and when you can begin to accept that, men, because women think, a lot of times, men don't go through things like that. The only thing they think about us going through is, is stuff that we say, men, but a man's confidence and how that woman, and remember when we talked about, when I said to you, D, about how really the woman is just as strong as the man, she's not the weaker vessel? Because she yeah. is where his confidence lies. She is where his confidence lies. That's where his confidence is at. Because remember when I talked to you about the, the man that was looking at my wife's butt or whatever and everything, and how he turned away and all. Now, but you know what made me laugh? Because I was like, man, he's looking at my wife. <laughs> you know? Because in her is my confidence. In her is my confidence. I, I don't even know if we realize how powerful what I'm saying to y'all out there. Yeah. That woman yeah. Yeah. is that man's confidence. That's why if you hurt her, he's willing to die for her when it's really his confidence, when it's really who it's supposed to be him. Because notice, I said it's his confidence. Yeah. That woman is his confidence. Now, now, D, you're not my confidence. You're someone else. Sean, you're someone else's confidence. But Donette Hodge is my confidence. <laughs> that when I watch her, when she leaves the house, I want to know how she's looking when she leaves the house. I want to see how she's conducted because why she represents my confidence. What's my strength? My God, catch this people. 
She's my woman, my woman. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you sorry. Good. This is good, passion. Chris. This is good. I get a little passionate yeah. because I want women to stop explaining why they're settling. I want men to stop explaining why they're settling. When at the end of the day, you don't have to settle if you make the right investment. Hey, make yeah. the right investment. You don't invest. In, in stock that has no potential to go up for you. Because what goes up for so Beyonce's stock goes up for Jay-Z. But her stock won't go up with me. Right. <laughs> it sure won't. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It yeah, won't. Yeah, that was good. That's a good analogy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because so, so I'm just saying, you know, women, men, stop saying I love you to get sex. Women, stop giving sex to get told you love. When it's the one for you. And I know we live in, because this new norm is, you should even live together before y'all do anything. You need to know what they like. What you mean? See, see how we explain it? We're explaining it again? If, here's a nugget. If you got to explain, explain it, it can't, it might not have to be that. Because an answer is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't have to explain to you why I'm with Darnett. You know why I'm with Darnett hard? Because she's the one. Hey. Let's drop. Simple answer. See? I don't have, well, how is she the Talk one? The one. How is she yeah. the Well, how you know she's the one? Because I know me. Well, how you know that it ain't no, somebody else? Because there's not another me. And she's me. And I'm her. See, mirror, no explanation needed. Yeah, I, I get that. I get. There's it. no explanation needed. Yeah. yeah. But when you gotta be like, well, you know, because she does right. uh, things for me, you know, she's always in my corner. You explain it too much. That might not be the one. <laughs> That's good. That is. That you, know, is you gotta really explain good it. It's a bit straight. Yeah. You know, and that is the difference between natural and normal. Normal requires us conforming to a standard. It's usual means it's average. <laughs> it's typical, which means, <laughs> and it's expected. Okay. So that means that what? All those things represent an explanation. Yeah. But when it's natural, uh -huh. there's nothing to explain because uh -huh. humankind didn't have nothing to do with this. <laughs> humankind can't explain why this is what it is. It's a straight answer. That's good, so, Chris. That's good. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So yes. as we, so young men and women, as you get, as you come into your confidence and just discovering your sexual confidence, the best way that I can tell you to, to come into your sexual confidence is to be you. Be the natural you. Uh -huh. If you can't fly from the seal, from the chandelier, it's okay. <laughs> it's, if, stop trying to watch videos, how to how to get different positions and all that. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Just do you <laughs> and let them <laughs> do them. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't care how many positions you learn. If that ain't who you are, you're going to be miserable doing it. <laughs> I don't care how many books you go get, go read all the Steve Harvey books you want. But if that ain't you... <laughs> Because I don't want a woman that thinks like a man and act like a lady. I want a woman that thinks like a woman and acts like a woman. <laughs> I don't need to be anything like me, like that. I don't need to, if that's the case, I'll be a homosexual. I don't need a man. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So see all these norms that we, 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 we adapt ourselves in to explain why we're not where we want to be or why we're not who we're supposed to be with? If you just go after what's yours. The sense, well, God has for you is for you. Go after yours. And yes, you're gonna sometimes you're gonna make selections that you're gonna choose. And God might say, okay, well, I ain't choosing it, but if that's what you want, go for it. You know, that's gonna happen. Then sometimes if if you're on a page and you're and it can start out the right way, and then as it goes along, the key is can y'all stay on the same page? Because if that person ain't on the same page with you and you ain't on the same page with them, then yeah. Even, even the corn that grows out of the ground, right, stays together so long, but eventually it gets picked. Yeah. <laughs> it gets ate. You know what I'm saying? 
Because, yeah. So you have to so you have to understand just because you started together and y'all grow together, and I'm saying this, I want to say this to the divorce people because a lot of times too, while we're talking about sexual confidence and all those things, people who are broken don't have no one or are divorced and everything, they take a big hit in their sexual confidence. And because to them it's like how did that woman take my man? How did she do this? How did this happen? How did that happen? And she's searching within herself and searching with Stop doing that. He made a choice. See, there's mm-hmm. no explanation. He made mm-hmm. a choice. Man, she made a choice. Because mm-hmm. the one thing God did give all of us is the ability. And this is what separates us from the animals. Because the animals do everything in- instinctual. But God gave something to us that he didn't give no other creation. The trees can't do it. The dogs can't, the animals can't do it. The fish can't do it. The birds can't do it. The grass can't do it. None of them have a choice in what Mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is by instinct. So stop looking into yourself trying to find an explanation. Let me give you the answer. The reason he cheated is because he wanted to. Totally. The reason he left is because he wanted to. The reason she left because she wanted to. The reason she cheated was because she wanted to. It wasn't because he had more money. It wasn't because he, 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 was, he was better in bed. It wasn't because uh, she, that she cooked better. It was not. He wanted to. See the answer? That's natural. <laughs> See, that's natural. He still don't know who he is. <laughs> so he's still trying to discover who he is. So how can he be yours? It's okay. God did you a favor. See, hmm. I want to, because see, now I sound like I'm advocating divorce, but that's not what I'm saying. Right. What no, I'm we, saying it's is totally we all not have what a you're choice. Saying. It's right. totally not. We all have a choice. Okay, plain and simple. God loves all of us. Mm-hmm. God is married to all of us. All of us keep making choices that take us out of his our relationship with us, right? Do he now change up and become a different God? <laughs> He's still the same God. Mm-hmm. He's still the same Christ. Mm-hmm. They're the same Holy Spirit. Neither one of them has changed. They still who they are. It's us <laughs> that keep cheating on them. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying to you. Stop finding an explanation why someone leaves your life. Stop breaking your confidence like that. They made a choice. Now what's going to be your choice? Are that's you going right. to now go to the new norm? Are you going to now do what's normal with everybody else, what we said? conform to this new standard of threesomes, rather be with someone that cheats on me, all being cheat, all women are gold diggers. That's gonna be what you're gonna conform to? Right. Or you're gonna go back and become natural? Yeah, you catch, are, you, are, you, are you catching what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Are you catching yeah, what definitely, I'm saying? definitely, definitely, this is good. This are you gonna good. go back to being natural? Mm-hmm. Go get the one that humankind couldn't make for you. Yes. <laughs> Go be with the and don't be afraid to open yourself back up. Now, I gotta give. I gotta, if, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do one side, I gotta do the other side. Yes. And don't lock yourself up to where the one for you can't find you. Mm-hmm. And that's the wall. Because the you're talking about yeah, that's the wall. Conversation. That's the wall. Don't put up a wall. Put up gates. Women, men, don't put up walls, put up gates. Gates do the same thing walls do, except you can see who's coming. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put up a gate. You ain't got to put up a wall. The gate, the gate <laughs> you know what just I'm, protects that, you. The gate just protecting your 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 territory. Like yes. you might put a gate up around yeah. your house. You know what I'm saying? There's no walls around heaven. There's only in the last I checked the word said ain't no walls up. There's nothing but gates. Yeah. <laughs> we see everything covered. Yeah. Ain't nothing but gates. Yeah. Just yeah. put up some gates. That means put some higher standard of living in of, of godly principles in your life. <laughs> and you won't have to worry about the walls because the walls become imprisoned. So many, so many. And it's killing your confidence. Because the thing about confidence is, sis, and, and, and this is going to mess some people up. But the thing about confidence is, it's fed through the appreciation of others. That's how confidence gets fed. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, okay. Mm-hmm. Let me give you the answer, not the explanation. Let me give you that. Let me give you the answer. Why? It notice I didn't say it comes from. I said it's fed. It's fed. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how it gets its nutrients mm-hmm. because 
It's nothing like. That's why even God took the time to say, you are fearfully and wonderfully made in my sight. Yes. That should give you some confidence. Yes. You are the apple of my eye. Yes. The very hairs on your head are numbered by me. Yes. That should give you confidence. See, it's fed by others. See that? So at the end of the day, but if you're in a wall, how is your confidence being fed? Who's now talking to you? You're talking to yourself. Because any... Because anyone that's getting self counsel to themselves, yeah. who's talking to you then? Yeah. Especially when they say, I ain't never going to love again. I ain't never getting married again. I ain't that's never good. doing this again. Who's that talking? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the. That's when the naturally, thing. you know, when naturally yeah. you are supposed to be with someone, you yeah. are supposed to have a help me. You are. It's natural. That's, that's the natural part. Don't get mad at God, cause you, cause we chose wrong. I chose wrong too. I, I got divorced. I chose wrong too. I missed it the first one. I missed it. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I missed it. I missed it, man. You know. But if I'd have been paying attention to what was natural, not what was normal, mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have never struck out. Yeah. True. Am I making sense, y'all? So. This, that's that's that I just want to see people understand, and I hope that I hope the women have got it. Got it. I hope the men that are listening teach your sons, man. Stop teaching your sons that they that to to have all these false things, you know, making them feel inferior because there's things that these that they're not gonna achieve as a man. No, and I stop 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 teaching them to grab their crotches and hold their crotches if that makes you stop it. Stop with the teaching them. Go outside and go knock them back out. None of if he lost the fight, he lost. Stop. See, that's one of the things that we were taught wrong. Well, you gonna take your butt back out there, and you gonna why? So I can be humiliated some more. So I can yeah. lose again. You are, yeah. now you're teaching me to take L. Why can't you just right. teach me? You okay, son? Did you? It's okay. You're gonna win some, son. You're gonna lose some. But at the end yeah. of the day, the, the key is: Did you stand on your principles? Did you stand on what was right? Yes, I right. did that. I didn't give in to what they wanted. Okay, then you're already you won in my book. See, see, see the reverse. See, see how we change that old normal to right. what's natural. Right, right. Because how many times do you get beat up and you run to God? But God don't run out there and start jump, telling you go back out there and jump on that person. No, God just wants me. But did you give up on me? Right. Did you still stand for me? <laughs> well, then you okay in my book? We'll 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 battle another day. I'll quit you even better than that time. See what I'm saying? gotta stop this normal teaching y'all we gotta stop this normal teaching is killing us our confidence spiritually sexually with the other one you guys said it's killing all three of them because it's making us create a standard that we're conforming to that never was meant for us to conform to transform creation god jesus never had an issue with creation obeying him yeah because he never tried to be anything other than what he was he didn't conform. That's right. And because he didn't conform, everything that he did happened. What would happen if you didn't conform to the new norm? Maybe everything that's meant for you to happen will start happening. Amen. Now, that, now, now you just said something right there. You just yeah. said something. Because it's clear. The word said, all of creation is moaning and groaning. Waiting for the manifestation for the of, of the sons, yeah. Sons of, yeah. What would happen if you take this time, men, women that are listening to me right now, what if you take this time to go ahead and manifest into the natural person God called you to be, not the normal? Wow. <laughs> Everything that was created for you will obey you. <laughs> Everything that's created for you mm -hmm. will obey you. <laughs> Whatever home is meant for you, you'll have it. Whatever vehicle is meant for you, you'll have it. Whatever woman's meant for you or man's meant for you, you'll have it. Whatever, whatever is meant for you that God created, what do we just say? Cause of nature, <laughs> caused by nature, everything that God created naturally for you will manifest for you. The only thing that's not going to manifest for you is the stuff that's not yours. Right. You can't come up in my house and take nothing out of here without going to jail. It's not yours. Right. <laughs> Getting beat up. 
<laughs> yeah, and you might leave with two lumps. Just because I said I don't fight, I can fight. But anyway, like, we ain't got to say it right, D. <laughs> we ain't going to go. <laughs> no, we ain't going to go there. Again, go there. again, all those books back there, sis, you may let me read them. All those pictures on your walls, you may let me look at them, Sean. Right. See? But they're still not mine. Yeah. That's right. They're still not mine. Yeah. I can even only if you borrowed it, time. even if you borrowed a book, you it's still not yours. You still got to get it back to yeah. the proper you owner. Get, so now you think about that when y'all go watch when when men when you go watch porn, women when you feel like you got to go to the strip club. Just remember, none of that stuff is yours. Right. Mm -hmm. You just borrowing it, and you borrowing in something. You borrowing something that's not a borrow, because mm -hmm. a borrow. Is when you loan somebody something with the intent of them just giving that what they what they let you use back. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when you give something else your essence of your soul That's that right. doesn't want to give it back? Yeah, right. Because Satan is not into borrowing souls; he wants your soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to keep stripping women, men. He wants you to stay on them corners because he's trying to gain something. That he don't want to have to give back to you. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's deep. Wow, that's deep. Wow, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, thank you so much. That was good. I mean, I I learned a lot from Me from too. your words, and I really appreciate it. And I know a couple of times you said, you know, you um breaking the man, the man code, not really the man code, but just telling the secret. Yeah. I appreciate that because that shows the purity of your heart. It shows that yeah. that. That you're willing to help your 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 sisterhood, you know, out, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and I, and I mm -hmm. really appreciate you standing up and going to bat because I believe if more men would stop like trying to like put that put that um, grid on that man code and then keep on like encouraging that man code, I believe so many more women will be healed. Yeah, yes. so yes. many more women will be healed yes. because because men are playing this 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 board game. I call it a board game. And, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. we become, you know, and then women who get on that board, they give you a piece in their mind. You know, you like a monopoly mm -hmm. game, whether you the shoe, the horse, That's good. the hat, That's good. you know, whatever, you know, That's but good. but on that on that mm -hmm. board, it's a it's a it's a grid, a man gridded board. So you will never win. Mm -hmm. You will never win. You'll never all win. You're, all the You'll woman is meant to do is be that pawn. And to like, mm. no matter what square she move on, it's a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell her I love yes. her. You know, tell her you love her so she can give you some sex. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, buy that nice car so so she can like be attracted to you to give you some sex. Do 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 do. You know, get some sex from her. And if you have a baby from her, just walk on away. You know what I'm saying? She might get mm -hmm. you for child support. Mm -hmm. She might not. But don't don't mm -hmm. help her out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so that mm -hmm. board is just like mm -hmm. a board of defeat for the woman. Right. So right. I appreciate you right. really like like giving some of those tips mm -hmm. and everything because if if and women, if you really listen and really like put to put into practice what he has even like said in a lot of his words, it's a game changer. It, it is a game mm -hmm. changer on the way men think. Yeah, on mm -hmm. the way man thinks. So, Sean, do you have anything further that you would like to say before we close out? Um, I just want to say I was writing notes when he was um, speaking because I, I did learn some things. And one thing he said that was very important that addresses the topic um, natural versus normal is to be you, the natural you. If you mm -hmm. continue to be that, then you won't get it. No I mean, things happen. We all have stories right. and we have more stories to tell. We only told you one each, but we have more True. stories. That doesn't have to affect us in our confidence in any area when we're adults, if we're being our natural right. self. So I, I just want to reiterate right. that. You said that, I'm saying it again. Be you, be your natural self. And again, yeah. I just thank y'all for um, following us and watching. I hope we didn't take up too much of your time. And just continue to follow mm -hmm. us on um, Facebook. We're at Just Life 2020. And you can send us an email if you have any questions or want to be part of our discussions. Um, our email is justlifegroup2020 at gmail.com. But thank y'all again. And thank you, Chris. And I'll let D close it out. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to close out. And again, we thank everybody for listening. And please share, you know, because it's a lot of women and men 
who could benefit from this topic here and and be sure to continue to follow because we still have to talk about a couple of more aspects mm -hmm. of confidence you know i think we uh, mm -hmm. we have to do the spiritual physical mm -hmm. and emotional mm -hmm. and um and the mental mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. i think we already did i can't remember but yeah about, just we talked about mental and we kind of touched on emotional we talked about mental but we okay. didn't really die it's a, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also on this sexual, um, the sexual confidence, we're going to have a part two because we're going to delve in a little bit deeper and we're going to talk about some more intimate um, conversations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. We're going to get a little <laughs> bit deeper and we may have more on the panel. <clears throat> um, and if you would like to like share and be on the panel, just email us at the Just Life 2020 group. Just Life group. 2020 mm -hmm. at, gmail. at gmail yeah or mm -hmm. either go to the facebook page and, and um dm you know me shonda or i and we'll get back with you because you know we we just want to know we're we are a sister's keeper mm -hmm. yes and you know the men you you know you are your brother's keeper you know it's about like healing at this point coming to the mm -hmm. end of yourselves coming to the end of yourselves when you find yourself in that pig's pen you know eating mm -hmm. eating a sloppy you done got down to the lowest there is hope mm -hmm. there is there is yes. renewal. So, you know, it's mm. just time to like, to like start again, reset, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Correct. so yeah. if um, Chris, do you have anything you would like to say before we close? I just wanted to thank you guys for having me on. I enjoyed it. Even though now I'm probably going to have to hang out here more because you guys have <laughs> got me kicked out of the, uh, out of the He-Man club. So I just want to tell y'all, I appreciate you guys, man. It was a joy and a pleasure to be on here. And I just hope that somebody learned something because I learned, uh, I learned a, a great deal from you guys. It really helped me with some things to help me with raising how I want to raise my daughter, seeing you two astounding women, you know, out here um, doing what needs to start being done. We need, we need more women on the forefront of these kind of conversations not these bashing men so many there's enough there's enough talk shows there's enough things out there because women are very influential and and there's enough out there where we're being bashed as men and being made to be put low to kill our confidence so we need more women like you guys that are out here saying no we're not here to bash our men we're trying to elevate our men we're trying to raise our men up and we want right. to we want the men to know that this is a platform that you could come on because we want to hear from your side right so many right. times man so many times women if you would just listen to us like these two women are letting me speak a lot of men out there just want you to listen to them so i want to thank you guys for allowing me i know i can't speak for all men but i know i spoke for the majority of men and i pray that you guys heard what a, what us as men feel. Yeah. Yeah. I know I felt it. I know I heard it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, thank you guys again for watching and listening. And please, once again, please share. And um, until we meet again, stay safe. And I know the, the coronavirus and everything is kind of like in the back stages, but I think they're talking about new variants and stuff. So just, just stay safe and do what you got to do. And do not walk in fear. And once mm -hmm. again, goodbye. And we love you. And thank you for listening again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.